come to order. We meet today to hear the distinguished chairman of the Federal Reserve, Benjamin Bernanke, testify on the recession that is plaguing our economy and on the prospects of recovery. Chairman Bernanke testified before our committee on October 20 of last year as we searched for ways to mitigate, if not avoid, a long recession. The chairman acknowledged then that monetary policy has its limits. Without being specific, he welcomed a fiscal compliment. Congress had just passed a bipartisan bill authorizing $700 billion to dispose of troubled assets, so-called TARP. Backed by these funds, the Treasury, the Fed, the FDIC have made extraordinary advances to banks and other financial institutions, recognizing what Chairman Bernanke told the Joint Economic Committee last month that, quote, a sustained recovery in economic activity depends critically on restoring stability to the financial system. This is one question we hope you will address today, Mr. Chairman. Just how strong and how stable are our financial institutions? By February of this year, it was clear that TARP relief was a necessary but not sufficient solution. So Congress passed on a partisan basis an even bigger boost, the Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which packed $787 billion of fiscal stimuli in the form of spending increases and tax decreases. We would like to know, Mr. Chairman, whether from the Fed's viewpoint this huge kind of cyclical thrust is working. Bold action was necessary to head off a collapse of the financial system, but the steps taken also swell the nation's deficit and the national debt. It's all but impossible to balance the budget when the economy is bucking a headwind like this recession because what we do to make the economy better is likely to make the deficit worse. Yet at the same time, we cannot add infinitely to the national debt without facing the consequences in global credit markets or on our future capacity to borrow. One purpose of this hearing is to explore both the advantages and the potential downside risk of our bold and unprecedented response to financial turmoil. Should we be concerned that some of our swelling debt must be financed with foreign credit? We hope that most of our outlays are for non-recurring needs and that much of what has been advanced in recent months will in time be recovered, repaid, and used to pay down the debt that we are incurring. We would like to have your assessment, Mr. Chairman, of that possibility. Despite bold, unprecedented action, the Director of the Congressional Budget Office told this committee on May 21st that our economy is still running at 7 percent or more below its capacity or $1 trillion dollars per year below its potential. Recently, there have been signs, however, of a turnaround. Business inventories are down, the stock market is up a bit, and so too, to some extent, is the housing market. My question to you, Mr. Chairman, is whether these are glimmers of hope or flashes in the pan. To keep this recession from growing worse, the Fed has pumped enormous liquidity into the money markets, so much so that some critics even worry of inflation, lurking, to be sure, just over the horizon, but a threat nevertheless. The spread between short and long-term treasuries has widened to more than 2.5 percentage points. We would like to know, Mr. Chairman, if these are salutary signs of a recovery or ominous signs of inflation. A month ago, Chairman Bernanke told the JEC that, quote, we expect economic activity to bottom out and turn up later this year, but he went on to warn, even after the recovery gets underway, the rate of real economic growth is likely to remain below potential for a while only gradually gaining momentum. The old locomotives that pulled the economy out of the rut in the past, real estate, consumer durables, are unavailing now. This causes us to ask, Mr. Chairman, what will empower a turnaround in this dismal economy, and when can we expect a return to normality? Mr. Chairman, as you can see, we've got a lot of grist for our mill today. We thank you for being here, but most, most of all, we thank you for your service to our nation at this very crucial time. Before proceeding with your statement, let me turn to Mr. Ryan for his opening remarks.